Morning guys, it's opening day of the season here at Thorpe Park Resort. They've had a bit of a sparkle project over the off season. We've got Big Easy Boulevard to check out, which is brand new this year. And of course, a small roller coaster by the name of Hyperia has been constructed. So I'm gonna go and give that a look too. So come and join me and hang out at Thorpe Park Resort. Look at that, Hyperia looking absolutely dominant in the skyline over Thorpe Park now. Of course it is complete, it got uh, topped off and finished a couple of weeks ago, but we'll try and get some closer views as we get into the park. Pier 13 has returned to Tidal Wave. It is very windy today by the way, so I'll try and make the audio as good as I can. I'm going to start the day in New Orleans for Big Easy Boulevard. This is newly opened at Thorpe Park, replacing the Angry Birds land. So it's much more open, they've completely removed the entrance, so there's nothing that even suggests that is Big Easy Boulevard. You thought they may have had some kind of entrance signage. It feels much more like a sort of walkthrough section now to get between uh, Amity and uh, Nemesis Inferno. And it all looks nice, it's all very bright. There goes Nemi. So Detonator is now very much themed to a fireworks factory. It looks quite nice around here. There he goes Nemi. And Sunset Cinema replaces the Angry Birds Cinema. They have, they have a Ready Player One uh, film showing. Okay, they've used plants to sort of segregate off this little plaza here outside the cinema. Uh, the uh, pathway is a little bit grubby though. Uh, you could have possibly done better cleaning all this up for opening. A gate of gasoline has turned up as well. That's part of the big easy bumpers. And we've got a Mardi Gras stage here as well. I guess this will be for the Easter holidays. So there's a whole new audio sequence that goes along with Detonator there. Seems to be chatting away the whole way up. They've added a few new facades around here. So we've got the Sax and the City Music Store. Obviously keeping with this New Orleans theme with all the kind of blues instruments and stuff like that. Uh, this side, we've got the Sweet Easy Sweet Shop, which looks closed at the moment. And the one time in New Orleans, which looks like some sort of snack bar. It has a uh, it has shutters at the front there. But obviously not a huge amount here, it is very much a sort of walk-through area. You sort of, I don't think many people come here specifically for Big Easy Boulevard. But it's nice to see that they've tidied this little section of the park up and got rid of a very outdated theme. Let me know what you think of Big Easy Boulevard down in the comments. Well the queue for Nemesis is an hour long, so I'm going to leave that for now. I'm not really here looking for a massive ride count today. It is of course opening day which means it's likely to be busy. It's not actually as busy on park as I expected. I think these large queues are largely down to the fact that there's a few other major rides that haven't opened yet. There's certainly a new view as you walk from this direction, isn't there? Look at the size of that. Hyperia absolutely towering over the tree line now. I think I might have a wander up in that direction. What do you think? You wanna come and join me to have a look at the Hyperia construction site? I think I might just spend the day down here because look at that view behind me. Hyperia is looking absolutely incredible. The walk as you come from Nemesis Inferno down here past Saw and Colossus, this just dominates the skyline. Like I barely even noticed Saw and Colossus were there. So let's take a bit of a closer look, shall we? And we'll also look at the new toilet block and the brand new Burger King as well. When I say brand new Burger King, it's obviously the Burger King that was already here. It's just looking a lot more plush and wooden and like it's from an Ikea catalogue. So we've got a game stall here as well, and then this all new, very flashy toilet block. I just mentioned I walked past um, Colossus and Saw without noticing. I didn't notice them because I haven't actually walked past them yet. They're literally there. Hyperia really just throw your bearings out.
absolute madness. So if you can't wait to ride Hyperia, comment down below and tell me when you think it's going to open. The handy little uh, hole to look through here, so you can see most of the site. So there's a dude there working on the uh, what looks like the chain return for the lift hill. The station building is just to the right there. Look at the outer bank as you come out of the station there. That looks crazy. You've got a dude working on that as well. I mean, this is probably going to be the best roller coaster in the UK and, and, and probably by quite a distance too. I know some people think the layout is short, but it's all about the elements for me. I've been on plenty of long coasters that do nothing and plenty of short coasters where every element absolutely smacks. This looks like it's going to be the latter. And if, if every element delivers as it looks to, this is going to be a world-class roller coaster. So we have the signage outside here. There's even a QR code you can scan. So I'll try and leave this on the screen for a decent amount of time. So if you do want to scan this as a viewer, you can do, see where it takes you. Of course, the downside of the giant structure of Hyperia being up there behind me is it now makes everything else here seem slightly underwhelming because all I want to do is ride that. And I'm looking at Colossus and Saw and the other roller coasters around and thinking, an hour wait for that. Ugh. So also around here, we've now seen all the removal of the black mirror signage. Uh, this has now been removed from the park entirely, which is good because it was rubbish. And as a big fan of Black Mirror, it was quite disappointing because it bared barely any relation to the show whatsoever. Um, we've still got the structure of Slammer there. I actually thought that had been removed. So it's a pretty chunky plot of land here. Um, if they do remove Slammer entirely, I mean, you could get something quite, you get a decent flat ride on there, maybe even a, a little compact coaster. Who knows? But. Uh, Certainly hope to see Thorpe Park developing this section of land next year once they've got all the uh, extra hype from Hyperia. I don't know if you notice up there, but uh, it still says Project Exodus. So let's go and see what else has been sparkled up by Thorpe Park over the off-season as we continue round the side of the Hyperia construction. I mean, just look how big this is. That saw there, by the way. Look at Hyperia compared to it. It's absolutely insane. And so awesome to see a UK park finally go for something of this scale. I know planning is an issue, but it's been 30 years. And let's be honest, the big one's not very good. We've needed that title to be taken. Come at me in the comments for that one. Lots of sign reveal in three, two, Wow, oh, I, I can't walk as quickly as I can count, unfortunately, but here we go. A nice yellow colossal sign. Something oddly sort of Pokemon-esque about it for some reason, isn't there? I'm not sure why. Apparently they're going to add some more accents to it over the course of the season, sort of spruce up some of the colours, make it slightly, yes, heavily yellow dominated. But it's looking good, it's a good update. The whole of Colossus has had a bit of a spruce up, a bit of a glow up in the off season. You may notice the track is a lot bluer than it used to be. It's back to sort of original colour. They haven't uh, repainted everything, but they have done quite a big chunk of it. All the uh, theming, everything here has been sort of touched up and painted. It is looking a lot better. Question is, does it ride better? The park also cleared away a lot of the uh, sight lines, so you can get a much better view of the ride area now. I've noticed both Chessington and Alton Towers have done the same as well, so maybe this is a more conscious effort. I guess we'll see how the season progresses. Is it me, or is this path around the right-hand side of the Cobra Roll new? I do not recall this ever being here before. What it does do is offer spectacular views of the Cobra Roll itself and the theming piece down there which has mostly been obscured in previous years. I mean, the water is not the most attractive. They could maybe make that look a little bit nicer, but I guess you don't really notice that when you're on ride. But yeah, yeah, really impressed by what I've done with Colossus. I mean, obviously, lap bars would be nice. But they have made an effort to, uh, to improve things. Also, now, over the fence here, you can get a bit of a shot of the uh, final barrel roll. I'll bear that in mind for cinematics. I, I doubt there's much call for a Colossus cinematic though, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, 
and the view of Hyperia coming from up this way is no less impressive. Look at Saw's lift hill and then look at Hyperia's lift hill. It's like double the height. Does anyone remember when Saw used to be intimidating? I mean, it's hard to be as intimidated by it now and it's being absolutely dwarfed by the beast behind it. that doesn't look like it'll be opening anytime soon is Samurai. So that's still being worked on with a cherry picker here. Uh, the ride itself covered in cellophane and wrapping so I think it's still quite a way off that. I just can't stop walking back and forward along here. It's so crazy isn't it? This is going to be open in like two months maybe. This will change the landscape completely. Honestly, this whole section down here, it feels like you're in a completely different park. It just doesn't feel Thorpey at all, which is uh, all good. Because Thorpey can feel a bit meh sometimes. Although the effort has gone in with the Sparkle Project and we'll explore more of that later in this video. So it doesn't actually feel crazily busy on park today and I, I may try and get a few rides in. I'm gonna go and explore a little bit. I think stealth is probably the direction I'm gonna head in. Oh, it looks like Ghost Train is a bit closed as well. I mean, if you see my review of that, you know I'm not too disappointed not to be getting on that today. But it's surprising, maybe it's opening at 12. That nah, just says closed. And here we see the awesome mural on the side of the arcades here. Look at all these funky donuts. I think I might get a snack Efron. Well, unfortunate news from Stealth which is pretty closed. There is a bit of a queue gathering, but there don't seem to be any signs that it's opening anytime soon. Swarm is also listed on the app as closed, but as you can see there, it is ascending its lift hill. Looks empty, so probably just testing, but I'm gonna wander around there and see if, because if that's about to open, that might be quite a good ride to get on. I am a hosta fish, I'm a hosta fish. Baby, I'm a mother I've been wanting to do that for weeks. Might get a copyright claim, worth it high risk of abduction. Really is one of the best themed areas in the UK, one of the best themed coasters. It does look so awesome here on Swarm Island. I've got an ambulance behind me and it's stuck in the ground. Well that queue doesn't look too bad at all so let's go get my first ride of the season at Thorpe Park on the Swarm. And then afterwards I'll come back and I'll get Dennis's thoughts. Yeah, that's gibberish. Well, the queue's being advertised as 45 minutes, but that looks close to sort of 15 to 20 for me. Well, I've never queued up here before. I don't know if this is new or whether they just don't usually open it up, but yeah, so the queue goes all the way down, wraps around and comes back on itself. So you have a queue kind of behind the station instead of out the front of it. Don't know why. for Thought Park for a few years, you would see this queue for Swarm and mistakenly think that's quite short. It's because they're tricking us. So the queue now goes up over this bridge here and wraps around outside here. So the queue ended up being around 55 minutes in the end. Advertised 45, looked about 10. It's now absolutely tipping it down. Sting's been campaigning for this for years. Opening day theme park weather in Britain. I think it's actually hailing slightly. These are, this isn't hail, this is blossom, but I can feel it kind of thumping my jacket. So while the rain and hail pelts the skin of riders, let's take a look around the uh, island store, see if we've got any new merchandise this season. funky bears up here and some sort of sloth. And these little shot glasses are quite cool too. I might get one of these. Fortunately that uh, hailstorm didn't last too long. It does look like it's going to be raining on and off until about 4.30 today though so might not make for a fantastic day at the park 
and I may actually uh, dash off a little bit early, seeing how it goes. But as we've got a bit of dryness, I'm going to go ahead in the direction of stealth. It's very, very, very cold here now, though. Brrr. So the all-new Sunset Cinema has a showing in about 10 minutes, so I'm going to have a quick look at what Stealth's doing, then I'm going to come back and join this queue, I think. The music in Amity Speedway is so loud now! I clearly taken notes from Chesterton and Alton, and maybe it's a Merlin thing to just make theme parks really loud in 2024! So I think Stealth closed during the bad weather. The queue is already pretty big, and they've closed the entrance, so there's also a queue outside the entrance too. Obviously, we'd really love to get out of Stealth today, but if we're talking an hour plus, then I just think I'll wait till I come back on a quieter day. So around the back of Big Easy Boulevard, it's all very bright as well. They have certainly uh, already added a, a proper lick of paint to this whole section of the park. And actually, the flow from Amity Speedway into New Orleans kind of works. So there's a similar situation to Stealth over by Nemesis Inferno 2. Ride obviously closed during the poor weather. Uh, we've got a massive queue within the queue line, but also a big queue spilling outside while the ride is closed. I really can't get enough of that view. And I tell you what, with the murky grey skies behind it, the white of Hyperia really does stand out. And Ghost Train, which is an indoor attraction, also has a queue spilling outside the station. It's weird because uh, the park really doesn't feel that busy comparatively. I've certainly been on much busier days than this, but uh, yeah, ride availability certainly hit by the weather. I'm not sure why Ghost Train would be so effective though. Well, the Ghost Train announcement just suggested that anyone waiting outside the front of the queue should probably go and check out some other rides and attractions instead. So I guess they're not too hopeful for opening that anytime soon. I honestly cannot wait for this to start testing. We are going to be able to get so many good views. And I imagine it will happen in the next sort of two to three weeks as well. So let me know in the comments on a scale of one to 10, how hyped are you for Hyperia? I'd say I'm at about 12 right now, stood here in front of it. It is just, our relationship is incredible. I have a feeling I might be spending a lot of time at Thorpe Park this season. Well, um, we have two rides open, Rush with a 55 minute queue and Walking Dead with an 80 minute queue. Everything else is closed. I think technically Hyperia is the best roller coaster here now because if they're all closed anyway, they're all technically SBNO. So I've taken my seat in the all new Sunset Cinema. I've got some fairly low budget 3D glasses to assist me with the performance. Let's see how good it is. So it's great to see these sunken gardens back available again. However, ride availability on a whole has not been good. Uh, at one point, there were two rides open <laughs> across the whole resort, certainly in terms of thrill, thrill rides anyway. There goes Stealth. Um, and not much joy with Sunset Cinema either. Uh, as you may have seen from my clip off the phone there, it didn't all go to plan. So they tried to get the cinema started twice. Both occasions it had no sound. Um, they gave up after the second attempt and emptied a completely full auditorium which even had some people standing because they'd let too many people in so yeah not a great impression of that I don't think I'm going to give that a second go today because uh, I mean I wasted about 20 minutes in terms of waiting and then being seated and whatnot yeah not ideal and much like Chessington yesterday a few teething problems at Thorpe Park today Anywhere else? I just want to go down this path and see where it goes. And actually, have one of the old loggers leap boats here. Look, repurposed as a flower bed. Always good to see old ride vehicles and things repurposed for bits of uh, park theming. So Stealth's had a bit of a glam up as well. Do you know where it goes? There's quite a lot of repaint, it's all looking very sparkly red around here now. Much cleaner and more appealing. And those skies are looking a bit better now as well, aren't they? It's 
so loud in Amity, so I've stepped away from stealth to have a chat, but yeah, always good to get back on stealth. The acceleration is unparalleled, especially now that Dodo Domba has closed over at, uh, in Japan. Yeah, I love stealth. It's the best ride here. Um, best acceleration you're probably going to experience now that the hydraulic coasters are a thing of the past. So get on down here, get yourself a ride on stealth. I wouldn't necessarily recommend waiting an hour to ride it, but it's a busy day. Uh, I fully intend to come back when it's quieter and get plenty of laps on it. So it does appear that Big Easy Boulevard was conceived with Mardi Gras in mind. It's a festival that's operated at Thor Park, of course, for the last three years and will be here again in just a week or so's time for the Easter break. And I fully intend to be back at the park here to experience Mardi Gras for myself. So subscribe to the channel and you can see that video when it drops. So I've just noticed that Sweet Easy has opened. Just a quick look around here. This is candy pips, various kind of sweetie bits. <laughs> well, a pick and mix tub is £7.95. I think I will give that a miss today. I've got a lot of the usual pick and mix options. It's kind of like being at a cinema, really. And one time in New Orleans, looks like it was just going to be freestyle refill machines. Detonators on five minutes. Shall we end the day with a bit of a detonation? Yeah, why not? Let's see if they've added anything to the queue line. So we've got this whole look, whole fireworks store in here. That's quite cool. And views of Nemesis. So I think we're about to ride the red, white and boom. With a blast radius of 600 feet. Detonator was pretty good. I mean, it's always been a pretty good drop tower anyway. The views of Hyperia from up there are amazing and almost a bit distracting. So I wasn't really paying much attention to the countdown and it just got yeeted out of my seat. But yeah, still a really fun drop tower, well worth queuing for sort of 10 minutes for. Well, it's all looking quite nice in New Orleans now that the sun's come out. Just went for a wee in their toilets and it was very swish in there. Obviously, I didn't take my camera in because I'm not a massive perv, but they have done a decent job. It looks much better in the sun, doesn't it? Here comes the splash. Yeah, now it might look warm, but it is actually pretty chilly on the park today. I know what that feels like on a cold day. And they probably feel like they're about to have a heart attack right now. It is intense. The storm surge has been here a few years now. It's always been viewed as a bit of a monstrosity. Also, you can't ride it unless you're in a group of four or more, which I've always found a bit frustrating. See, wondering what you guys think. Do you think this is a good addition to the park? Do you think maybe they should get rid of it and do something better with the space? So that's all from my day here at Thorpe Park Resort for their opening day of the season. And it's been a bit of a mixed bag. I think um, when the weather's been good and the rides have been operating, there's been a really nice vibe on the park, but there has been a lot of ride downtime and poor availability too. I uh, wasn't a big fan of the Swarm's new queue line diversion and Big Easy Boulevard on the whole I think was pretty solid. It's a shame about the Sunset Cinema fiasco though because I think that could have been handled better. I don't think the guys there really knew what was happening at all and just sort of exited everyone from the cinema very quickly. It didn't feel like they gave it many opportunities to get going so that was a bit of a shame. But overall today was not about hefty ride counts, it was about experiencing the opening day of the park, seeing the Sparkle Project, the Big Easy Boulevard and of course how Hyperia is getting on and I cannot wait to come back here and ride that. If you enjoyed the video a like really helps and uh, subscribe if you'd like to see more content. I was at Chessington yesterday for their opening day, you can watch that video up on the screen now. That was a bit of a mixed bag too. All right, take it easy guys. See you next time.